Romans chapter eight, the eighth chapter of the book of Romans is complete in itself. Let's back up there in the uh, seventh chapter. Verse 15, for that which I do, I allow not. That would I do not, that I hate, that I do. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then there are no more that I that do it, but sin that dwells in me. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will is to be present with me, but to perform is that which is good I find not. For the good that I would do not, and evil that I do. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is more than I do. I'm telling you, I can follow along. I know exactly what the man talking about. <laughs> oh, oh, Lord. Oh, I, I, you know. Look, look what is on that scale when I weigh this. Oh, Lord. Oh, no, I know I need to fast today. I know I need to fast today, but let's wait till tomorrow. Let's wait till tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not in the flesh. Nobody's begging. And it comes on down. I thank God, O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? And you know what's the matter with him? You know what bothers him more than anything else? He persecuted the body of Christ and he brought people into places to die. He had to live with that. You can find that in, in his teachings all over it if you remember it. Therefore, what Brother Hagin used to say, you find a fact, therefore, find out what it's there for. <laughs> therefore, there is now, say now, now, no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. For the law, of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and flesh. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit, who walk not after, after the five physical senses but after the word. The book. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Why? No faith. But we are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you, now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead, who? The spirit of God. shall also make alive your mortal body by his spirit that dwells in you. Therefore, brethren and sisters, we're not debtors to the flesh to live after the flesh. <sighs> but to live after the word of God. Thank you, Jesus. Now then, Isaiah chapter 53. Mm. Who hath believed our report? To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant as a root out of the dry ground. He hath no form or comeliness, and when he shall see him, there's no beauty that we should desire him. Now, you know he's a good-looking man, but, I mean, he'd walk down the street. He's just fine-looking man. 
but there wouldn't have been anything about him, particularly growing up as a young boy. They were amazed at what he knew about the word when he was 12. But he wouldn't turn your head and look and say, oh. Despised, rejected of men, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. We hid, as it were, our face from him. He was despised, and yet we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. We did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Yeah. With his stripes, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. Yet he, we have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before his shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. Oh, but Matthew chapter eight. Now I make a strong suggestion that you do what I have done. I just took a little line tablet. I used yellow because it shows up better on the mirror in my bathroom. And I wrote these scriptures out and scotch taped them to the window. I'm mean, into my bathroom mirror every morning. Well, of course I did it this morning. I've done it so I don't, you know, but I put my eyes on them in the morning. Amen. Amen. And of course I did it this morning without having to look at it. In the eighth chapter of the book of Matthew, and we'll come down Twelfth verse, but the children of the kingdom shall be cast into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Jesus said unto the centurion, or to Cornelius, go your way as you have believed, it'll be done unto thee. And his servant was healed the selfsame hour. And when Jesus was come into Peter's house, see all of that was there in Capernaum, because that's where Peter lived. It's where Jesus moved his ministry from Nazareth. When Jesus was come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid sick of a fever. And Luke 4, 38 said it's a great fever. So this was something like typhoid or it, it was a killer, whatever it was. A great fever. He touched her hand and the fever left her. Well, of course it did. She arose and ministered to them. She, she just, this is Sabbath. She just got up and fixed supper. <laughs> when evening was come, they brought to him many that were possessed with devils. He cast out the spirits with his word, healed all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Now, when Jesus saw the great multitudes about him, he gave commandment to depart to the other side. And we, they, we begin to move in there now. That's been fulfilled. If it's fulfilled then, it's fulfilled now. And our backs didn't have to be striped and whipped. He bled from the crown of thorns. He bled in his back. He bled in his feet because they had scourged him before, which meant they whipped him from his back all the way down to the back of his legs. He shed blood from every place in his body, his head, his back, his hands, his feet, his legs. And they thrust that spear up into his side and his sinless blood gushed out. 
Hallelujah. And the crucifixion was such that if you relax your weight, it'd push you up there. And if nothing else, you'd suffocate. And, and you'd, you would, you, your mouth would get so dry because you couldn't breathe. And that's when he said, I thirst. <clears throat> but by those stripes, yes. we're healed. Yes. Now for the grand finale. <laughs> First Peter chapter two. Mm -mm -mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, this second chapter has a lot of conditions in it. Laying aside all malice and guile or deception Hypocrisies. You know what the word hypocrite means? Mask. It's a term that, that's, that is used uh, concerning actors. It's a mask where an actor, like in uh, the Willie George movies that we did, my name was not Kenneth Copeland, it was Robert Owens. So what? I was wearing a mask. Amen. That's, that's simply what the word hypocrite means in Greek. So when he called the Pharisees hypocrites, meant that they have on a mask. You're presenting yourself as one thing and you're another. You're just a big actor performing a part. Amen. Amen. So, so a lot of that is in here and you need to read all 23 verses. For even unto we were called because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile or deceit found in his mouth. And when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not but committed himself to him that judges righteousness, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live under righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed, for you were as sheep going astray, but now you're returned unto the shepherd and the bishop of your soul. And sins that, and you go over there to the book of Hebrews, Sins that so easily beset you or things that get on, get on your mind and you, no, 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 get rid of it. Yeah. Let me ask you something. When did your life begin? Huh? It's not, not a trick question. I mean, what, <laughs> when did it begin? Huh? Yeah, today. <laughs> well, <laughs> mine began December the 6th, 1936, but there'd been a lot of roads since then. It began today. what I do with today? You remember the song? Yesterday is dead and gone and tomorrow's out of sight. Well, I'm not gonna help you make it through the night, but, but you <laughs> But that book will. <laughs> that book will help you make it through the night. I mean, I tell you, Keith, one time, I, I had the flu and an infected toenail at the same time. And my right toe got swelled up and all, and I, I mean, you know. <laughs> and I thought, oh, listen, the flu too? What in the world is going on? And I thought, well, I'm not having this. I'm going to get rid of this for a morning because I got to preach in the morning. I just started saying it over and over and over. I, I, I counted them. I don't, I don't know how many times. Yeah, by his stripes, I'm healed, glory to God. And just walk in the room, <laughs> tripping around that, that hotel room and my foot hurt. And, uh, and <laughs> I don't know I was, how many times I said it. 
it got up into the hundreds. I find it, I just quit counting. I just kept saying it, just kept saying it. And, and I just made up my heart and mind, I'm gonna say this all night long. If I have to go into that meeting in the morning without any sleep, I'll do it. And I don't know, all of a sudden, it hit me on the back of my heels and came up my back, up like that and out the front and I will, every symptom was gone. Now, my grandfather was diagnosed with cancer. Now, you know, no telling what kind of chemicals he used out there on that old farm. And they said, you got to die, Mr. Owens. Well, my mother was sitting up with him. And all of a sudden, she, she said, oh, no, I've let him die. And she looked, and he was out of bed, and he was standing there doing this. <laughs> Just as hard as she could. She said, she said, Papa, what are you doing? He said, I'm getting rid of this cancer. Amen. She said, what are you talking about? He said, Jesus told me to do this. And if you want to talk to him about it, ask him. He's standing right there. <laughs> He's standing right there. Well, I want you to know He's standing right here. He's in this place. He's in this room. Since the day of Pentecost, he's been worldwide. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. By his stripes, we were, if we were, we are. Only if we believe it, if we take it. And so we wind up at home at Mark chapter 11. Have faith in God. For verily I say, for amen I say unto you that whosoever, it's a whosoever thing, shall say, to this mountain, shall say to the kidneys, shall say to the liver, shall say to the throat, shall say to the headache, shall say to the cancer, shall say to the broken arm, shall say glory to God, shall say unto the mountain, whatever the mountain is in your life today, and online, it's the same right there where you are, glory to God, he's there. Be removed. Be cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he'll have whatsoever he said. The Lord told Brother Hagin, he said, do you notice there in that one verse, say is used three times and believe once? He said, my people are not losing it on the believing part, they're losing it on the saying part. So he said, you have to preach three times as much on saying as you do believing. Glory to God. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. When you stand praying, forgive if you have ought against any that your Father which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. If you don't forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive you your trespasses. They came again to Jerusalem. So, Thank you, Father. Let me pack up here. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Stand with me, please. We're going to say it. Did you hear what I said? Yes. Now, I'll, I'll, let me demonstrate something to you. Let's all together say, greater is he in me than he is in this world, okay? All right. Greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. Now, we're going to say it again, only this time we're going to do it like David. We're going to say it with all of our might. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Yeah. 
What happened? <laughs> you believed that and it came out of you. What did it do? It pulled the joy out of you. Now you know what we're going to do. I'll lead you. I have been made alive in Christ. He was raised from the dead. I was raised up with him. I am seated with him in heavenly places. Received his resurrection life. Resurrection life is energizing my spirit, my soul, and my body. Resurrection life is working in my body right now. I'm getting stronger every day. My eyes are seeing clearly. My ears are hearing better. My mind is functioning stronger. My bones, my organs, my nerves, my ligaments, my joints, my heart, my lungs, my brain, my blood, is being supercharged with the resurrection life of God. No disease can touch me. No sickness can enter my body. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Not I, but Christ lives in me. The life which I now live in the flesh. I live by the Spirit. Uh, I live by faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. The same Spirit that defeated death, hell, and the grave is in me. I am a believer. I am not a doubter. The same Spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead is in me. Resurrection life. Making alive my mortal flesh. The resurrection life of Jesus is made manifest in my body. Jesus is alive and so am I. My heart is well. My ears are well. My eyes are well. My lungs are well. My, my whole body is healed. From the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. Glory to God, hallelujah. My back is healed. All up and down my spine is made well. Hallelujah. 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 Now do something. Prepare for your future in life and in ministry at Kenneth Copeland Bible College. Apply yourself practically to ministry through class electives designed to develop your gifts. Get equipped for your calling, enter into your mission field confidently, and teach others to do the same. Graduate as an available voice to carry the legacy of faith into your life and ministry. To find out more, go to kcbiblecollege.org. Apply today. My name is Jennifer Milenbush. Um, I'm from Omaha, Arkansas. Five years ago, I was in a car wreck. Um, it was a pretty major one. Even the police officer said that people don't survive. Um, and for the last five years, um, I have had where like every week I have to go to the chiropractor to get adjusted because my hips get off 
and my back hurts because it doesn't stay aligned. This morning I woke up with my back, lower back hurting. Um, it was sore, like even just bending over a little bit, it was sore during service. I just felt like warmth go across my body and my back. For the first time in five years, I am able to touch fully to the floor. And I haven't been able to even go that far um, in five years. I've been believing for my back to be healed and to stay aligned and my hips to stay aligned for a couple of months now, so. Uh, no pain. <laughs> no pain. Go run across that front here, go. Oh, praise God. Come on. Yes. Yes, hallelujah. Hello, I'm Larry Warren. Brother Copeland led us in a powerful confession of faith today about the resurrection life of God in you for your healing. I would strongly recommend that you go back and watch that again and again. As you declare the word by faith, it will be established to you. Watch the BVLV broadcast free on our website, kcm.org, or on KCM's Roku channel. Our free gift to you this week is the teaching series by Gloria Copeland called Be Made Whole. Be sure to request your copy and settle in your spirit the truth of God's Word. Jesus came to give you life and life more abundantly, and God wants you to live healthy and whole every day of your life. Listen to this series and find out why walking in love is the key to receiving your healing and staying healthy. Request your free copy today on KCM.org. Now, if you need someone to pray with you, call KCM's prayer line. We have prayer ministers who are licensed and trained in the Word of God. And the reason that's important is because when you call, they will pray the scriptures over you. There is weight to words prayed in faith that are based on God's word, which is his bond. Use this time to get God's word on the matter and agree in faith for his promises to come to pass in your life. Kenneth Copeland Ministries has prayer ministers in all of their offices around the world. To contact one nearest you, go to kcm.org. This is Brother Larry reminding you that God loves you, we sure love you, and Jesus is Lord. Kenneth and Gloria Copeland want to thank you for joining us on the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. To learn more about Kenneth Copeland Ministries and how we can help you grow in faith, check out our website for free content and resources available to you on kcm.org.